Greetings hobbyists, this is Arsans of Vool, and in this video we're going to have a look at how to and the benefits of linking objects. So linking objects is where you create an extra instance of an object that you've got, though it's not quite instancing, which is a slightly different thing, as you'd normally do that to instance something onto another point, for example with geometry nodes. So we're going to have a look at that, and if that was a bit quick, don't worry about it, we're going through everything slowly, but what I've got here is a really cool spaceship, it's a battle barge from Italian Moose, he also goes by Moose Makes. So if you want to search him up, he's Italian Moose on Thingiverse and Moose Makes on Patreon. And he creates these fantastic SDLs that can be downloaded. Now, I've brought this into Blender. I've got rid of some of the extra junk that you get with an SDL. This isn't a problem with his SDL, it's just SDLs in general. And I've removed some of the turrets that were basically on these central points here along the spine and also some of the ones there as it's going to be a good thing to say maybe I wanted to change this myself and add a different type of turret. And I've created my turret. So here's my turret. Now, we want multiple copies of this turret, and that's very easy to do. We just normally Shift and D, and we can get a duplicate and put that on here. But let's say I'm not finished with my modeling yet. I'm just trying to get a good gauge of where I want everything to be. And that means that this turret's going to change at some point. So I don't actually want to do that. What I want to do instead of pressing Shift and D is if I click on this and press Alt and D instead, this creates a linked duplicate. And what that means is that these are connected together, but I had freedom of movement to move it wherever I wanted to, as opposed to let's say an array, and I'll demonstrate that a little bit later as well. Now what's cool about this is I can do this multiple times. So for example, I might want to just grab that one and then Alt and D and put that, let's say here, and all of these are linked together. I can even do something, let's grab this one and Alt and D, and bring it over here and I'm going to actually scale this one down to be like a smaller version of this turret that's going to go let's say here and let's just G and Z that down so it's on its point. So we've got all of these one two three four turrets and they are linked together but we can do things for example I could press R and Z and rotate that round on the Z axis. I now want to start adding some extra detail let's say I want to come here and I'm going to go into face mode and I want to change this top let's just say I want to add some extra detail so I'm going to I to inset that and E to extrude that up and the eagle eyed view probably not looking on your phone where the image is going to be too small will notice that has now done that on every single one of these linked items which is obviously absolutely awesome which means that we can just go around changing the things that we want to adding in the details that we need and it's going to change every single one of them uh, let's just go into vertex mode and do that over the other side as well so this is a really really useful tool and one that i just don't see being used very much the other thing that's really helpful about this is that you can actually start making changes to any of them. It doesn't need to be the first one. It could be, for example, let's say this one here. If I want to, let's say, bring in a aerial, let's bring in a cylinder, let's shrink that down, and let's do something like that to there, and then let's have that off to the side, and then we're going to get that face eye and then extrude it up a little bit. So we've got our aerial. Now, because this is a separate object, it's not going onto the other ones, but as soon as I control and plus on my number pad to use ball tools, and then let's hide that. Now we're instantly gonna get a problem with this. If I now come in and go to apply, it won't let me apply it without this becoming what we call a single user, which means that suddenly it will become separated from the others. We don't want that. Instead, if you go to object, apply, and then go to visual geometry to mesh, that actually applies that, but it doesn't make it a singular object. So you can get around that quite easily. Also, if you've got hard ops, you can just do that with Q and then you go to operations, smart apply, and that will do that as well. So slightly quicker way of doing it. And as you can see, that's making a smaller version for our littler turret as well, which is really cool. Now, some things to bear in mind because you might have some files that you suddenly realize you really want to do this with and you might not have set it up to begin with. Now, if I just select this one, shift and D, so I've made a duplicate of this, but I have not, let's rotate on the z-axis so it looks a bit better, but I've not made this a linked object. So now if I come in and change anything to do with this, I don't know, let's go into face mode and I'm just gonna, let's eye that and extrude that out. You'll notice that it's changed it on the other ones, but not on this one. Let's undo that just for now. So we've got the objects the same. 
Now, we can actually bring this into this fold of everything else being linked together, but you've got to be a bit careful with it. So the way you do this is you select the object that we want to link to the rest, shift select the object that we want to link to, or the one that's part of the group, and then go to object link and link object data. Now, I want to be very clear about this. I selected the one that was not linked and then the one that's linked to the other four afterwards. And that's really important, that ordering. We'll talk about why in a second. And now if I just change something, let's uh, do something like that again and extrude it up. That's still working on all of our linked objects. Now, if I just undo that and go to the point where these are not linked, or actually let's just start again to make sure that this is being done correctly. So if I shift and D to make our copy, and now if I select this one first, now notice this is one that is linked to the rest of them, and then shift select the one that I want to link it with, notice this is the other way around, and then go to object, link and transfer data, and link object data. Now if I make one of these changes, you'll notice that it has done it just between these two because it has dragged this out of the linked group from these because I selected this one first. So you do need to be careful with your ordering there. Whether you want it to be joined to the larger link group or you want to have this one being dragged out of it. So there's a lot of tricks to this and I can see that being something that could go wrong. The other thing that's really cool and something that you can do to visually represent things very easily is if you want to know what's linked together, if you just click on one of your linked objects and press Shift and L and then you've got your select linked and you click object data, it will instantly select the ones that are joined together. So a really quick way of visualizing this. Now that is particularly useful if you're using something like the construction lines add-on, which I've spoke about previously. There's a link if you want to have a look at that. So if I just, uh, let's grab one of these, let's shift and D and move that up so I'm making a non-linked version. The reason this is quite useful to do is, let's say we wanted to have an array of these. We want to have these, let's say we've got a battlement. In fact, let's just bring that over here. Let's shift and A mesh and bring in a cube and let's really make that big and let's say we've got something where we're making I don't know a castle or something some sort of fortification let's bring that over to there and let's say we want a load more of these all along this edge now normally we'd just array this which is perfectly fine so I'm just going to use hard ops for this because it's got a quicker array function and we would do something like that this has a problem that we can't, well, do anything with it. I mean, we can, but if I go into face mode A, R and Z to rotate around, all of them rotate. I might not want all of them rotating. I want to have different ones facing in different directions, but still be able to edit them. That's where things like construction lines become really useful because I can use construction lines to select it, control and then Y and then keep it on the Y axis somewhere like there, click and then I can use my divide by and you can see this in the top left hand corner if you haven't seen the video on construction lines I can say divide by three and it's going to put in the extra ones but these are all individual objects they're not linked together so I can R this in the Z whatever I want to but again I can just quickly select all of those objects link and link objects and then now I can edit them as and however I want so I could for example I don't know grab that face and that face and extrude it out so we've got a little line on one side and it will do it on all the others obviously we need to go into vertex mode a and alt x to that to the other side so it does it on both sides so we've got those options here it's really quick and easy to use this linked object data and it means that you've got the potential of well modeling in a much more easy way if at some point you want your objects to not be linked, you've got some options here. But the easiest one I find is to go into the object data properties. This will tell you that it is linked to things and you can see that in this bit here. It's got a four, which means it's linked to four things in total, which is one, two, three, and four. If you come to this one and click that four, it's now unlinked. This one is still now linked to the other three, so it doesn't unlink the other ones together, but this one is now not linked. Obviously, you can see that with our Shift and L and Select Linked, those three are linked, this one's not. So hopefully that's got some potential use for you in future projects. Might even have some use for you in projects you're doing right now. And if that has been useful to you, please do hit that like button. It really helps spread the video around YouTube, and it feeds the wonderful YouTube algorithms that keep everything working. Have a great day, guys.